My name is Tola Labi. Today I'm going to be answering your questions. Now I want to start by thanking everyone for sending in your feedback, your questions, your comments. Now your feedback and your questions are always welcome because they help us to produce better content for the channel and just helps us to improve generally. Now my last um, class on how to land yourself bigger clients um, got quite a lot of comments and some people were not quite satisfied with my recommendation. I got this pretty interesting um, feedback from Fola Jomi. Ibrahim and it says here great one sir but I feel like you didn't do justice to the to that title it felt more like a video on difference between a big client and a small client as opposed to how to get bigger clients I honestly feel like I have been click baited well thanks a lot for that Johnny for that comment and that's the first time I'm hearing the term click baited um, thank you for bringing me up to speed with that word well Product Masterclass is not aimed at clickbaiting anyone. Product Masterclass is aimed at educating and informing um, people on how to address design issues. And not just design issues, but general business issues for startups. Well, um, I guess with that class, a lot of people just found, found it hard to accept the simplicity of the solution I was recommending, in the sense that I, I I came from the from the from the viewpoint that to get bigger clients, you need to cut off smaller clients. Now I I I I really don't know what more to say on that because that is what works. Um, I could tell you rent an office space, go for a two years masters abroad. Um, wear a suit and tie to work every day, but, but, but these things do not help you get a bigger client. I'm talking based on experience, and this is what I've experienced in, um, in, in my line of, of work as a graphic designer. I started out designing logos for free. And what did I get from that? I got more people calling me, telling me to do their logos for free. More people kept on calling and said, hey, I heard you did logo for free for so and so can you do a free logo for me and people say you know i heard you did this person's logo he told me he did it free i want mine free too and i had to stop doing free logos i i, I had to put an end to that i had to tell them no i don't do free logos now pay me x amount pay me ten thousand naira i i know I, I, I now charge ten thousand naira for for logo design and of course the first few people refused to pay because they, because they felt that the design should be free. But along the line, as I insisted, and I, as I insisted on getting paid for my work, some people came along and said, yeah, yeah, no problem. I have, I have no problem paying you 10,000 naira to do a logo for me. And those people went out and told other people that I designed logos for 10,000 naira. And those people came with the expectation to pay 10,000 naira. Now, when I wanted to move from doing logos for 10,000 naira to doing logos at the rate of 25,000 naira, I had to stop doing logos for 10,000 naira. When people came for 10,000 naira logos, I tell them, look, you cannot get logos done by me for 10,000 naira anymore. And I'll charge 25,000 naira. Of course, the first few people that came were not ready for that information. But after a while, someone came along and said, you know what? I'm cool with 25,000 naira. Here it is. Now, do my logo and I did that logo and that person was happy when I went to tell other people that this guy does good logos for 25 and as I scaled up my my fee I got more people that that were ready to pay that fee you cannot keep small clients and expect to have bigger clients you have to offload small clients to get bigger clients it's it, it's experience proven and it, 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 it does work. I think the biggest challenge is that people are not ready to go through a hundred people to land with that one person that is ready to pay the fee you are asking for. And, and that just has to happen. If you scale up your fees, of course, the first people are going to go through that shock process of saying, this is not how much you used to charge us before. It's either they say, I'm ready to go along with you with this rate or 
I'm looking for someone else. But but you must be able to stick it out and 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 go through that waiting period for people to settle to that amount that you are now charging. And and I hope I've been put some clarity to that issue. I I think we should get that mentality out of our minds that you need to to do we have this we have this mentality that we need to put some things in place to get bigger clients you have to have a bigger office you have to have staff you have to be advertising on tv you have to have two million followers on instagram it all those things do not really matter the thing is is when you're ready to scale up you scale up and wh- wh- whoever is not willing to to scale up with you you just have to drop that's just the reality of it you just have to drop that person from your list of clients so I hope I hope I'm be, I'm better able to answer that question. Now we got this second question from at Olumiwa06. It says, most times I do logo designs. I'm always not satisfied with it. I feel like it's not up to standard. It's not creative enough, and the likes. How can I get better at design? Now, not feeling satisfied with your level of work is a good thing. It's how we grow as as designers is how you grow as a business person is how you is how you improve your service you must be able to look at your work and say i'm not satisfied i could be better so so it, it it's not actually a bad thing to feel like your your work is not up to standard or not creative enough when i started out designing and not just when i started out designing even till now i still look at my work sometimes and i say this is not creative enough this is not good enough and that helps me to grow. That helps me to push further. Now, you, but you must put that in perspective too. I, I guess the real question is, how long have you been designing? If you've been designing for one year, two years, a couple of months, then you shouldn't put on due pressure of your, on yourself by comparing yourself to someone that has been designing for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, and just hoping that your work will be on that level. You must, you must respect your journey and know that you are on a journey. I always tell people, be your biggest fan and also be your biggest critic. That means appreciate your work for where it is and also aim for higher heights. But, 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 but you must be able to come to that point where you, where you know that it's going to take time and consistency to get to that point where you, where you want to be. And even when you get to that point where you want to be, you always see that there's always a higher level to attain. So, um, Olumi, what I'll just say is, if you want to improve your technical skills, then there are a lot of ways. You, you could sign up for a graphic design course. You could go back to school and do a program. Or you could get tutorials online and watch that. But respect your journey, most of all. And just know that you, you, you cannot be an expert in one day. It takes time and you, you, you must be ready to give in that time to get to where you want to be. Now, we've got this question here from Waffles and Lemonade. I love that that um, Instagram handle, Waffles and Lemonade. It's, he's asking, do you attend a design school or something? Yes, I did attend a design school or something. I did. Um, I, uh, I'll give you a, a background on my um, design journey. Um, I, I, for my undergraduate, I studied architecture in Obafemi Awolo University. And for my postgraduate, I, I went to a school called Niagara College in Canada and I studied computer interactive multimedia and design. Now, um, what I say about design education is it, 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 it's very debatable on whether it's necessary or not. Now, it, it's good, but you must know that design education doesn't make you a good designer. At least from my experience. Doesn't it, does, does it make you a good designer? It opens your mind to design and exposes you to, um, to an environment where you're with people of like minds and uh, an academic design environment. But it, it doesn't, doesn't make you particularly a technically better designer because I had been designing before I went to school and um, I was getting client jobs and I, and I was doing pretty well. But one thing I would say, because a lot of people say, oh, you, you schooled in Canada, that's why um, your work is so good. But um, I, I really wouldn't say my technical skills, I wouldn't give it to 
to my schooling in Canada. In fact, if, if I wouldn't attribute to anything, it would be from a lot of stuff I saw online. And, um, but what, what, what schooling in Canada did for me was the fact that it helped me to, to know that what I had was of value and, uh, and how to channel it as something of value. Um, I was taught how to appreciate design and how design matters in, in the world's eco-structure right now. So um, if, if, if you want to build your confidence and know how to better talk about design and sell your, your gift of design to clients, to make them know what you have is of value, then go to school. Let, let someone teach you that. But technical skill, you could learn that. The, 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 that's abundant right now. There's a plethora of things you can learn online to help you with your technical skills. So, um, yes, I did go to school. It wasn't a design school, but I did a design course. And, um, yes, it was helpful, not for technical skills, but a lot of intellectual skills. Now, the next question here is from at fisayomi.png. And is asking, do you handle clients outside Nigeria? And, yeah, I do handle clients outside Nigeria. I don't work for client outside Nigeria on quite a number of occasions and um, it's, a, it's a very good question because a lot of people do not understand that um, there's a learning curve to handling international clients. It's not just the same as handling someone within your locality, you speak the same language, um, have the same tradition and, and things like that. Handling international clients it, it, it is it's um, a whole new ball game, and it takes um, a lot of trying to learn um, languages and cultures and expectations. Even when you're handling clients, an Abuja client is different from a Lagos client. A Lagos client is different from an Enugu an, client. I, you realize that they all have their own unique idiosyncrasies that they bring to the table and just understanding it. With, with Lagos clients, I realized that they have this more urgency to getting their work done. And unlike with Abuja clients, are willing to give you some more time to, to be creative, to do your work. And um, expectations are just, are just different. And when, when you look at even handling clients outside of Nigeria, and, and here I'm not talking about about working, working with interna international clients on Fiverr or on 99designs or any of those things. I think if you are doing that, then, then you, really are not, you really are not doing the interactive part of, of design. You, you are pretty much just peddling design. And I guess th th this is a class for another day. But um, right now we're talking about a client finding you out and designing to work with you or with your with your company specifically um, and they're working one-on-one -on -one with you from from the get-go not looking from a pool of designers now uh, um, it takes a lot of practice and understanding cultures but, but i guess that that is the fun part of design being able to work with nigerian clients work with, with clients in ghana work with clients in china and knowing their expectations you, you, you would see that Sometimes um, when you work with clients that are from more Western countries, you, you would see that um, they're more open-minded when it comes to delivery of work, allowing you to explain your thought process, not holding too rigidly to their own opinions about, about the job, um, willing, to be, willing to be educated. Unlike when you're working with a lot of clients here in Nigeria, a lot of them are very strong-willed, very opinionated, and it takes a lot to, 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 to teach a client uh, or, or to even communicate your point of view to that client. Um, yeah, but I guess th these are uniqueness that just helps you as a designer to build your, your communication skills. So yeah, I do work with clients outside Nigeria and I would, I would encourage any designer to take up the opportunity to work with clients outside your country, whether they're other African countries or Asian countries, wherever they, you may be. Just take up the opportunity. It's, it's a good learning experience. So those are all the questions we can take for today. I want to thank you to everyone that sent in questions. If you couldn't take your questions today, we're so sorry. We'll take the questions in the next class. I promise you that. 
and um, please if you have any questions you want us to to take a next class please send us your questions send your questions to proopmasterclass at gmail.com and we will definitely answer your questions in the next ask me session um, if you have any comments please feel free to drop your comments below if you have any topic you want us to discuss on the business of design please feel free to drop a comment below um, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and share the video i'll see you in the next class